Back in the shed today, guys, I'm gonna show you how to solder copper pipe. We're gonna do it in 15 and 22 millimeter. We're gonna do a variety of different joints as well. And we're not, through any of this video, gonna use my blowtorch. Strange, I know. Maybe run that one. Whoa. Hit the subscribe, hit the like, comment below, and hold tight. Let's do this. So what do we normally do when we're doing a standard solder? What we usually do, professional plumbers out there, I use a Rothenberger Superfire 2, and I use propane for all of you King of the Hill fans. And what we do, we clean the fitting down, we flux the fitting, then we put the fitting together, we heat it up using one of these torches. Then we heat the fitting up up to a lovely hot temperature, tap our solder on it, and if it runs, we let it all run round and evenly heat the fitting up like that. I've done loads of videos on how to solder. You've seen loads of them, hopefully, already. So what are we going to use to solder copper pipe without using a blowtorch? You've guessed it. We're going to use the Antex Pipe Master Professional Soldering Gun. First thing is, is I've got the 15 millimeter one here. These ends are interchangeable. We can take them out and put 22 millimeter ones in, and later in the video, we'll do a 22 millimeter fitting as well just to show you that that works or hope that it works because I've not actually done it yet there's also a small sheath in here as well that acts as like a, a conductor for the heat in these and you can periodically change that over they send a spare set with them so what it does I mean it's fairly straightforward is we we get a pipe that we want to do and then we put this around it and that's it pretty much and um, what I've noticed already is you can slightly bend these two teeth in a little bit so it gets a better hold but also I've noticed that the cutouts don't quite fit around the pipe properly. Um, and I think that might affect the conductivity when you're heating one of these things up. I imagine it's quite obvious now, you've got to plug it in. And sometimes going to the van and getting a uh, extension lead is better than burning down someone's house. And that is what one of these is gonna be good for. You'll be able to get this into a gap that's that wide of really old wood or whatever, clamp that on there and heat that pipe up without worrying about heating up anything else. But we'll talk about my thoughts about this at the end of the video, whether I think you should buy it and who I think really this product is for. Another thing that came with it that was flat packed is this little bit here. You lift these two kind of prongy bits up and then it acts as like a, a heat rest for the pipe master, which I'm not really happy about. <laughs> it kind of feels like it would fall over at any minute and if it was touching something or you didn't notice or it accidentally touched your leg, something like that. Uh, there's also a small little light on it that tells you when it's on or off. Um, but let's get it turned on. Let's do a 15 millimeter fitting now. This is what you're here to see, how to solder copper pipe without a blowtorch. Uh, we've got my ox cutters here, which I absolutely love. They're brilliant, they hang on the side of the bag. I am actually gonna get another set of these. Now we've got a dirty old bit of pipe here because I wanted to show this work on dirty old pipe. You know I love a dirty old bit of pipe. I wanna do a bit that's got a fair bit of pipe off the back of it. So, you know, there's quite a long way for convection to happen. Trying to prove in a way, you know, I, I kind of want this to work. On these, I've got my pipe cleaners. I use my fluctuator. All these tools that I use regularly on this channel that you can get on our floor. These are absolutely wicked. So look, we're getting a nice built up fitting. Right then, so ready to solder. So I'm just gonna turn it on, move everything away, little lights on. So yeah, 44, 42, blah, blah, 45. Wow, it's getting much hotter, wow. Now it says on the instructions you're to wait four minutes, so I might as well set four minute timer on watch. You can get our t-shirts by looking at the merch shelf just below this video. Check them out. I'm wearing a medium at the moment, aiming for a small one day. It's never gonna happen. Christmas is around the corner. Another two minutes, 30 seconds to go. You know what? I wonder if I could reheat my tea with one of them. Okay, so what we do is we clamp around here now, and like the clamps move a bit. I've just noticed that straight away. I'd say it's probably best these clamps, you know, it's really hard to not just want to grab them with your hands and move them to where you want to. But guys, I sped this bit up because you can't really see it very well from the camera angle, but I'll do the top joint in a sec. Watch how this works. Let's just touch some in. I know you're not going to see it, but the next fitting you will. Oh my God, it's running. It's run. Huh. Wow. Right, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah, so we'll grab this top fitting like this. And then we just hold these clamps on here. Just hold them. I mean, you could even put a little bit of strapping around the clamp even and walk away and, you know, stand back or whatever. I don't know, you know, this is... I just count to 10, maybe. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
one and maybe run that one. Whoa! Wow, maybe just, yeah, maybe count to 20. Huh. Wow. <laughs> and that's not a bad, clean kind of fitting either, is it, you know? I mean, I know it's a bit dirty here, but the actual, the actual quality of the joint is sublime. There's our first joint. That is very, very good. Look, I know you guys are probably going to want me to shove it onto a pressure tester. I can tell you now by looking at it, after 30 years of doing this job, or well, 20, 20 years, sorry, doing this job, that that is a perfectly good joint. There's nothing wrong with that. The old beast is still on. It's just sat here at the moment. I can feel the heat coming off it. I mean, that is a bit of a worry. If that was in a nice thermos flask that I could just lay it in, I'd be a lot happier that I'm like, oh my God, I might touch it or something like that. Right, so let's just do a straight coupling now. So, flux on the end, flux in there. Okay, right, we're just gonna do this in real time like we did with the elbow. I'm going to pop it just on the middle. Let's just see if we can do one, the both ends of this joint at once. So, there we go. Now, I'm noticing that these just don't quite fit on the fitting right. I bet if they were just chamfered back a bit, we'd find that we get a much better, much quicker bit of um, soldering going on here. I just think maybe these, these actual clamp bits need to be just the right size. They're almost like the right size for 15 mil pipe. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong here. Maybe I should... But then they're too loose, so yeah, it's all very strange. Well, let me get these. You're gonna see me be incredibly impatient here. Usually I'd never do this if I was soldering with a torch, but I was just so ready for it to, to be ready, and I just kept tapping it. Just watch in real time as I solder this joint without using a blowtorch. Run. You see when I let go of that, it's like it moves a bit, so you've got to be really careful when you come apart. Still another successful joint. Let's do a bit of 22 mil. Now, what we get in the box, you've got to buy these extra. These are the 22 mil bits. Now, all we do with these is we take the old ones off and put the new ones on. But the old ones are currently about 500 degrees, aren't they? So the first thing we've got to do is switch it off and then unplug it. And then we wait. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to take them off with a pair of grips and put them in a bucket of water. <laughs> That is hot. So there's our 22 mil ones in, ready to go. Right then, so 22 mil. This time we're gonna go onto the pipe, which I think is the right way of doing it. It doesn't really have instructions. Uh, and to make sure it's ready, look, I've just dabbed a little bit of solder on there. Look, look, solder is coming off there nice and easy like that, so. And I think as well, good idea, is to grab like a set of grips over the top. Let that make a huge difference, look, just like that. Sadly guys, this wasn't really a success. I don't know if it's because the pipe size is too big or it doesn't like doing tees because there's a lot more metal there or whether I'd done something wrong. Um, it did kind of go in after a while. I had to run the solder around quite a lot and you'll see in a minute it goes, but it doesn't really suck in like I'd want to see it. And I actually had to finish off this joint with my soldering torch, which kind of negates the reason that I'd have it. If you were a DIY, you'd probably stick with it for even longer and eventually it would go in. But for 22 mil pipe, tees, elbows, that sort of thing, 
I think I'm going to stick with my blowtorch for now, guys. You don't want the heat on the pipe, you want the heat on the fitting. Well, just for a bit of fun then, let's just see if we can do this one up. Because I'm not having any fun anymore. So look, what I'm having to do here, you know, I'm like, oh, just, I mean, look, that's doing that fitting nicely, actually. That's run okay, but look, I'm having to hold it on with a set of grips. Let's try this on a capillary fitting. And this time I should actually have to do really not much. So let's just pop this on here. Uh, let's go at this end first. This should be perfect for DIYs if this works. And I'll do my extra little bit where I just clamp it on a bit. However, I was very impressed with how this worked on a capillary fitting or a Yorkshire fitting, however you want to call it. Oh God, I, I, I'm even second guessing myself what they're called now, yeah, but it worked really, really well. I mean, look at all that. That just came running out really, really quickly. The solder was completely complete all around the outside. I was very impressed oh, with good, that. Actually. And that actually sort of suits for me the fact that this is more of a DIY tool or a get yourself out of a sticky tight situation tool for a plumber. Um, so it definitely has its perks there. Solder there, solder there, all around the tops and all around the tops there as well. So then, there we go. That's the end of my review. I'll leave you to think about what you want to do. There's links to these on the Amazon store below if you want to get one. It's a handy addition to the tool bag if you're a plumber. It's a handy addition to the tool bag if you're a DIYer. It might be a nice place to start for you, learning how to do soldering if you use one of these. It's slower than using a blowtorch, uh, but it's safer in confined spaces. They work well with capillary fittings. They work well with simple fittings like straight couplings and elbows. They don't work as well with larger fittings and more complex fittings such as T's and pipe size reducers. So I imagine your main question is, am I going to chuck away my torch? No. Am I going to chuck this away? No. Is this going to be in my van all the time? Yes. Is this going to be in my van all the time? Yes, just in case I need to use it on a job where I know I need to get somewhere really tight. There is problems with this. Number one, as you could see with the 15 mil ones of these, they weren't going properly around the pipe all the time. I don't think I should be having to use my set of grips to be trying to sort of force it onto the pipe to get a better connection. I think this, it feels like it should shut more, but you know, it won't, I really, I can't really say how I can stop that from happening. It's, uh, yeah, I want to I wanna close it more, but it won't. You know, it has a use and I think this use is going to be mainly for your DIYer who doesn't do a lot of soldering, who doesn't know how to use a torch, who isn't happy using one. Another thing as you saw if you want to swap over, say I was doing that fitting we just had a minute ago where we were doing a, a, a joint, a T joint that had a 15 mil coming off it and a 22. I'm not going to be able to do all those at the same time. So I, I would see this tool being used by DIYers to do straight fittings and elbows. I don't think it's going to be able to do T's very well because there's too much metal to heat up in one place to be able to make those solders work properly. That being said, it does have a use when it comes to being in a very, very tight spot. What I'll probably use this for is taking off these two ends and heating up my cup of tea with it. But it will be in the van. It may come out in future videos, but it's going to be a rare occurrence. That's what I'll say as a professional plumber. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, everyone. Please click the subscribe button, the like button. We'll be back in the bathroom uh, at the weekend. Hopefully I'll have got the floor tiling down. So I'll be showing you the tiling system I use for getting floor tiles down. The tilers out there are gonna hate me on this one because I can tile, but I'm not a tiler. Massive respect to you tilers out there because it's not an easy job and I want a set of knees and a lower back when I'm older. But thanks for watching today's video, guys. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you, you know, if you want to buy any of the tools that I've used here, you can find them at the Amazon store and all that sort of stuff. But I'll see you at the weekend, hopefully. Remember to hold tight. See you later.